In this demo, we will show how to enable communication between a Modbus TCP device and a Rockwell ControlLogix PLC, which uses Ethernet IP. To do this, we will use the Ethernet IP to Modbus TCP linking device from HMS. In the scenario we're using, I've connected a Schneider Altivar 320 drive, which uses Modbus TCP, to the bottom side of the linking device. On the front side, I've connected to a Rockwell ControlLogix L71. Now the neat thing about the linking device is that everything is handled from inside my Familia Logix designer environment. The only thing I need to do is to download the add-on profile for the product, which I can do on anybus.com. When I've downloaded and installed the add-on profile, I can set things up in Logix Designer. I start with the PLC side, that is the communication to the Rockwell Control Logix PLC. I want to add the linking device in the Ethernet interface, so I right-click Ethernet and select New Module. I find HMS Industrial Networks in the vendor list, and I can see that the Ethernet to Modbus linking device shows up. So I select this and click Create. I name the module HMS linking device. I know that I want to use the IP address 10.10.55.120 10 for the module, since I know that this address is available on the network. I click Change and now get to a window where I can launch the Configuration Manager for the linking device. So I launch the Configuration Manager and get a message that there is no configuration available. Well, da, this is what we're going to do now. First, I need to set up the IP address for the linking device in the Configuration Manager as well. As you remember, this was 10.10.55.120. Now, I could have done this externally using bootp before configuring the linking device, but I can also use the included IP config tool, which is included in the package from HMS. So I can see that our module has been detected by IP config, and I double click to configure the IP address. I turn off DHCP since I want to set the IP address manually, and enter 10.10.55.120, which, as you remember, was the IP address we wanted to use for the linking device. The subnet mask. I set to the standard 255.255.255.0 and click Set. OK, I can now exit ipconfig and open the web-based part of the tool and set up the actual data I want to exchange between the drive and the PLC. I start with setting up the Modbus client. This is the bottom interface of the linking device. Here I want to use the IP address 10.10.55.121. Now this IP address does not have to be in the same range as the PLC, 10.10.55 in this case, but to make things easy in this demo, I've kept them in the same range. I do not want to use DHCP, since I want to assign my own IP address to the Modbus client. So I type in 10.10.55.121. I also write the same IP address into the router IP address. I click Save and can then go on to the Modbus servers, or slaves to use another terminology. Here I want to add my Schneider drive, and for this I want to use the IP address 10.10.55.195. So I click Add New Server and Edit. Change the name to Schneider drive, and state the IP address 10.10.55.195. Now it's time to add my transactions. The data that is to be sent between the drive and the PLC. To find the Modbus registers for the drive, I've referred to the drive's manual and find that I want to add four transactions. So I click Add New Transaction four times. And then click Edit on my first transaction. This should be a read holding register according to the manual function code 3. So this is already OK by default. The starting register should be 2 and the name is status word. OK, so the next transaction is also a read holding register on starting register 3 and the name is actual speed. The third transaction is a write multiple registers, start register 2 
and the name is control word. And finally, another write multiple registers, start register 3, and named set speed. OK, so I'm now done with my transactions according to the manual of the Schneider Drive. I now click on the link at the top to apply my changes. I click Apply, and the changes are now being downloaded to the linking device. All right, I can now check the tag editor and see the inputs I've just created. The Schneider Drive status word and actual speed. And in the output tab, I can see the output tags towards the drive, control word and set speed. I now exit the tag editor and click OK. I'm asked if I want to change the module definition. Yes, I do. I click OK again and close to get back to my Logics Designer window. Here I can see in my tag list that the transactions I've just created are now present. So I download these changes to the Rockwell PLC. When the download is finished, I click on Monitor Tags, and I can now test the connection by typing in a couple of values for the drive into Rockwell Logics Designer. And I can see that the Rockwell Control Logics PLC is now communicating with the Schneider drive.